How's it going everybody and welcome to another installment of YouTube's AMA. I wanted to cover this one, uh, I'm going to try to keep it short and be concise because uh, I am pretty busy right now. But uh, I wanted to cover a couple of co comments that were left and provide some clarity and things like that. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the comments that have been left lately. All, all good, there's nothing bad, it's not like I have to like, you know, slap you and, um, you know, uh, remediate or you know discipline anybody everything's good it's just you know I want to be clear here with the intentions moving forward and stuff like that so um, we have I've been going through and just trying to uh, um, answer some questions on how uh, stuff is put together and things like that um, so based off of so I've been doing my best to try to answer these questions as best as I can um, so I'm not going to, uh, get into, uh, some of these I, I'll, I'll try to answer from a technical perspective and how the technology works, not necessarily, um, you know, anything, you know, political. I try to stay away from all that stuff. Um, but I'm getting a lot of really good feedback on the NRC workbook and it seems like some folks have a, I think it's a really good idea to take it the next step and also cover the encore topics as well and there's not enough coverage of topics for a workbook in my opinion for CCNA which I'm sure I uh, at least that that was my intention yesterday in yesterday's video was it to, to cover that so my intention now is to uh, continue building out the the topology and all the stuff that goes along with that it's gonna take some time and then go through the workbook topics so cover Encore and an RC since I'm certified in them I will dub it CCNP Encore and an RC uh, workbook or something along those lines. If I'm not certified in a particular area, but I'm not I'm really knowledgeable on the on the topic, then I will just call it. You know, for example, uh, I'm not Fortinet certified high level. I've got like the, the fundamentals, um, but uh, for and for like FTD, if when I do firepower coverage, then it'll just be like the firepower workbook and things like that. So. Uh, just so everybody understands where that comes from. Uh, it'll cover the exam blueprint topics and uh, will be certification focused for stuff. But anyway, um, I wanted to cover a quick one real quick. Um, asking about if we're going to Patreon, will I include any images? Um, and the answer is no. I, I won't be able to do that for you. There's, um, do I have access to images? I do. Um, and that really comes from working in the industry and getting access through uh, different means, you know, having partner accounts and things like that. That's how I was access, able to access a lot of images. So that is something that I was able to do. But um, I won't say I'm limited to what's available through CML, but that's how I get all of my images. And I do have an intention of doing an updated SD-WAN uh, series, videos and workbook and things like that. It, it's always going to be workbook first and then videos to follow. So that's essentially my goal so that the videos go smooth and the implementations are done correctly and yeah, everything works. So uh, if you want to go use your Google Foo and go find the images online, that's your call. Um, you know, yeah, have fun with that. Um, I never thought about it. The point about redistribution have a LAN network divided into eBGPs. Um, can you please talk about uh, I pretty much already have, man. This is one of those things where you're just going to have to uh, I'm going to call it stew on it for a while, which means you're just going to have to read into it. You're going to have to lab it up, test it out, and just spend some time in it. I mean, I've done my best to try to explain all these things. Uh, I was always wondering if links between routers inside ISP can have... Oh, I took, covered that yesterday, and typically no. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm rebuilding my big BGP lab that I had, because it was all uh, 10 net addressing space. So I need to change that up so that it's not using that. Um, so that'll be more real world. All the workbooks I'm trying to create are going to be real world focused, um, but specifically covering all the exam blueprints as much as I can. There will be cases like when I cover Palo or Fortinet or Firepower, if I'm limited to things like licensing where I need to have this particular license uh, in order for that particular feature to work, I'll note them and we'll talk about it at a high level, but 
Um, there's going to be some things like in, in depth IPS, IDS, stuff like that, I won't be able to really cover. Um, will the topology for the NRC work be available for us to download and import into EVNG? Yeah, it will be, and that's the whole purpose. The topology is big um, on purpose. I know there was a comment to me on Twitter, there was a DM that was asked why the topology is so big, and the answer to that question is, well, because the fact that the, the ask by you guys was to have a topology that covers the entire exam blueprint in one topology. So it'll literally be us walking through all the individual topics and things like that as we go through, implementing them and then troubleshooting them. And I am currently, uh, where is it? I am currently working on the flow for that. It's literally right here, how I'm planning on going through. It's just still a work in progress. I will be deploying multicast, even though it says just describe, it's gonna be important to cover those topics. So I am working on that. Um, good session. Uh, this one's kind of a longer read, so I'll kind of, Go through it as quickly as I can. Real world course would have to have clear objectives. I agree. Some metric thinking behind it so that the subjects in the course are bound by attainable in a lot of time frame and measurable terms of level of proficiency. As with any study, I guess how much time and complexity will be involved. Some thoughts I had. Firewall, of course. How deep in terms of HA features, next generation ish, layer seven stuff, VPN, IDS, IPS, yuck. Uh, I can't argue with you on that one. IPAM tools, monitoring NetFlow, SFlow, etc. Troubleshooting beyond console debug. Span, PCAPs, Wireshark, T-Shark. I've never heard of that one. Uh, the world of TCP flows. What congestion and end host failures might do to TCP windows. TCP fast start options for storage streaming traffic. Uh, IP path MTU discovery. PMTU, PMTUD. ICMP considerations. TCP MSS, maximum segment size, uh, MSS clamping, double-sided NAT, loaded and session persistence mechanisms and load balancing, choosing the right gear for the traffic type volume, white box gear, open source uh, network saw operating systems. It goes on and on and on. I haven't read Network Warrior yet, but maybe one of those real world books for some ideas. How about reviewing and compiling a list of the most useful field guides, books for the use viewers, and then cherry pick topics from them. It's actually a great idea. Uh, I would definitely would say that there are a lot of really good things that you posted here that are going to be definitely valuable as we move forward. And real world networking is going to be a challenge to develop because there's so many moving parts, right? It's real world on purpose. So one of the things I've been thinking about is coming up with a high level set of goals that we have um, and where we'll um, start doing this is a more of an interactive type deal. Instead of me creating a workbook per se, it'll be me walking you through, um, I'm, I'm thinking about going live a couple times a week maybe for a couple of hours every week, maybe a day or two. I, I had to figure out my schedule, but uh, the idea would be for the real world course, have it broken up into multiple sections so that you guys, and I would, I would do something like a Microsoft Teams call, at least that's what I'm thinking would be a good idea, and then we would be able to take all of this information and with you guys live in a, YouTube live plus in a team's call where we can dig into it and you know it's not necessarily what Rob thinks or what Rob says it's going to be you guys are going to be bringing your opinions and suggestions and things like this I want it to be a kind of a community effort but I, I don't really see this being a workbook kind of thing because it's not specific to certification it's specific to real world so I'm not an F5 guy. Um, I know very little about it. So the load balancing piece would have to come later on down the road once I've had a chance to go through F5, uh, learn how it works, and you know I rules and all the stuff that goes along with that. So that would take some time for that piece. But everything else, I don't know what the capabilities are going to be for doing the TCP stuff, like fast, uh, slow start, fast start, maximum segment sizes. We can dig into those, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with doing that. But I'm thinking like YouTube Lives, 
and then having a, a small group of you guys who want to be involved on a um, Microsoft Teams call where there might be, you know, let's say there's uh, half a dozen of us and we're going through a set of scenarios and um, you're like, hey, well, what about if we do this? And we might, it might be a combination of Palo, Firepower, Fortinet, ASA, and, or, or a combination of those things. Or if someone's hung up on a particular topic, we can dig into the details of it. And so the topology is big on purpose. That was another comment that was made offline of why is the real world networking topology so big? Well, it's meant to cover everything, right? That's the whole point of it. So anyway, that's, that's at least my, my game plan and my hopes for it. So, um, but yeah, good stuff. Uh, it's a good idea to test all topic from CCNA on core and RC in one lab. Yep. That, that was my goal as I was thinking through it. So definitely for sure on that one. Could you please build a lab for an RC using new iOS, IOL L2 level three images? They're included in CML 2.7 and they're even lighter and faster than uh, iOS V. I'm not 100% sure if there is feature parity between the two platforms, but maybe you can first try an IOL. If, all the, if they have all the features you want to lab for an RC, uh, and if they're missing some, you can switch to VIOS. Also, please include this lab, in this lab ICE VM for AAA. So I thought about that, and I'm going to first attempt it with iOS V. And now mind you, when I'm building this out, this is built on a bare metal install of Eve Pro. And um, I'm looking for pretty snappy responses. So, and I'm intentionally not using the CSR because it is a little heavier on the RAM. So my goal would be to have it so that it's uh, decent size, but you still manageable even if you don't boot everything up, even if you only focus on a particular area so that you know, you're you know, focusing on DMBPN or BGP or MPLS, you're only booting up the bare minimum devices that you can support. And I realize not everybody has the ability of deploying a server, deploying EVE bare metal, and all those things. I'm, so I'm pretty um, uh, unique in that respect. But at the end of the day, uh, maybe this is a motivator for you to try to get something in your home lab if you can, if, if it works out for you to where you can follow along with that. So I definitely am working towards that. I, I don't know if IOL will work outside of CML. I would have to do some research on that and see if I can't get it to work in EVE. I know iOS V will work in EVE. That's why I'm using it. It is a lighter weight image and I'm hoping to have, I'm gonna power down another lab so it's 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 a base install. I mean, meaning that there's only one lab running on it, not multiple labs running at the same time on the same server, so that I can get a general idea of what the utilization is. So, and I can get a, give you guys a range of how much CPU is needed. I might even like export the lab that I have and put it into a VM and see what the VM because that'll be uh, much more concise in terms of say eight CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM, for example, see if that would work. Um, it does take a while to boot these devices up, but at the end of the day, um, it is what it is. So thanks. I wonder if I have to resubscribe to everything again to get the update, but thanks. Um, so so uh, I think you meant Patreon. So my goal with Patreon is for uh, instead of having a dedicated website um, and moving in that direction with it, and uh, th there was too many um, too many hurdles, in my opinion, um, to get things working the way that I wanted them to. So I used to run a training company a long time ago called Rikers Island Training. Don't bother trying to Google that. It's uh, it was a very very poor uh, naming convention on my part from a website. Uh, although I did have quite a bit of success with it. Uh, it was actually acquired by another training company about a year and a half after I got it started. And so I wanted to go back to that and focus on uh, training. And the reason, uh, so the workbooks, I had started doing them and building out uh, workbooks for different stuff 
and all of that was bought by another company, so I actually legally don't have any rights to it. I still have access to all the content, but I can't legally have that live because it was bought out. So instead of doing that, I was just like, well, and then I look at YouTube uh, video view counts for anything that I would do that's, you know, uh, video courses that I would put out for whatever. And the view counts are just really, really low. So rather than putting out a whole bunch of content that's never going to get watched, I would rather put the content together in a way that, you know, for those people that are interested in watching it, I would put together like an all access pass thing. And my goal is to try to build that through Patreon. It looks like it's going to work for me. And so my goal is to do, keep things very, very simple. Um, the workbooks will always be their own uh, price point. Meaning if you only want the workbook and you don't care about the videos and you just want to download the workbook, the e-files and all that type of stuff, that'll be its own price point and, and uh, product. Where if you're like, if you like the idea of an all access pass and you want access to the workbooks, the uh, the videos and anything else that I might put out there, the um, the the weekly uh, Friday coaching sessions and things like that. Um, there will be one price point for that. I'm thinking twenty five dollars a month, and it's a recurring membership. So you would gain access to, and uh, you gain access to that. You get access to all the workbooks, all the videos, all the topology files, anything that's in that you normally would pay ten dollars a month for. You'd be paying a little bit more. Uh, but they would be two separate things. If you, uh, I'm thinking the YouTube membership will probably die down once I convert over everything else to Patreon. And that's actually my goal, is it's far easier for people to go via Patreon than it is to go through YouTube membership. Um, so at least that's my game plan. So um, I want to make it a one-stop shop for whoever you might be. If you are interested in the All Access Pass, you get access to everything out of the gate. And it's not live yet. I'm still working on stuff, but um, I had to figure out how some of the back end stuff was going to work yet. But that's at least that's my game plan. So if, if you're interested in something like that, great. Um, I'm taking the uh, the the video, the any of the certification courses and things like that. I'm taking them off YouTube. Uh, what's there already is going to stay. Anything that's new or updated, uh, and there's a lot. I'm going to be putting that on the. Um, will be accessible through Patreon. That's my goal with it. And, you know, this way here, it's, you know, if you want to go through the workbook and go through the videos, there will be, um, you'll see videos in a workbook for a particular series, whether it's service provider, SD-WAN, ASA, FTD, Palo, Fortinet, uh, VMware, Cloud, whatever it is I plan on covering, Nexus 9Ks, things like that. That's my game plan. So, um, if you're in, if that's something that you would be interested in, awesome. If, if you're like, eh, uh, you're not worth the 25 bucks a month. That's fine. That, it's like, that's your call. Um, but I, I feel like that would probably be the best way to move forward with this. And it's reasonable. I've looked at other uh, vendors' capabilities. I won't be hosting labs. So if you're like a learner that wants to point and click lab to spin up in 30 seconds so you can just do your thing, that's not going to be me. I'm not going to be hosting labs. There's just, um, I, I actually do have the ability to do that if I wanted to. I could deploy Eve in my home lab and then uh, give folks uh, a VPN access into it. There are, uh, there are options available to me, but I'd rather just not go down that rabbit hole. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the, the point that I want to try to make in this video. So um if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, drop that in the comment section below. There will be all the appropriate links uh, available to you guys. And I will see the rest of you tonight for the Whiteboard Wednesday where we'll start diving. We'll continue doing our exam prep and all that good stuff. And I actually forgot what we're going to be covering tonight. We're going to be going at, uh, addressing schemes. So if you're like trying to figure out how you should IP address stuff, we're going to be talking about that at a high level. We'll take a look at some uh, different ways of trying to identify that type of stuff and go from there. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll catch all of you guys in the next one.